We're back in the kitchen today. We are making canned coleslaw. So this is a recipe that we tried for the first time last year and we absolutely loved it. We were a little skeptical when we first made it because this recipe uses a pickle brine and usually with coleslaw, I like to make a creamy dressing, but because we are canning it, that's just not appropriate. And it turned out that we actually really loved it. We loved it straight out of the jar. We both prefer eating coleslaw that is a little more crunchy. So we have lots of different ingredients to provide that today. We have cabbage, kohlrabi, beets, carrots, and then we've got lots of greens, collards, different varieties of kale. That all lends a really nice texture to the finished product. And you can definitely stray from that and use some different ingredients. The most important part is the pickle brine. We're gonna be getting to that later, but first up, I have to chop all of these ingredients. I'm starting with this regular green cabbage. And then we're gonna be moving on to this Savoy cabbage. I really like these kind. They have these really pretty wrinkly leaves and this matures a little bit later in the season. So these are really dense cabbages and that's what they look like on the inside. They're really beautiful. I'm gonna be transferring this cabbage into a bucket. And I also have some cabbage that I'm gonna combine. I previously chopped it up yesterday to help speed up this process today. Now I'm going to add some kosher salt. I'm gonna do about one tablespoon per every head. And that's just going to help pull out some of that water of the cabbage before we actually go ahead and get started with the recipe. I've got both these buckets full with green cabbage. I'm gonna be setting them aside and getting some of the other ingredients chopped up. I'm starting on the kohlrabis first because I want these to go in with the cabbage since they're pretty dense and I also want moisture to be drawn out of them. If you've never cut up kohlrabi, it may seem like I am not using a lot, but we don't eat the skin, and I'm sure you could eat the skin, but it, the skin's tough, and then the whole bottom of a kohlrabi is usually pretty tough too. So what I'm looking for is when I finally get, you know, my knife cuts into like soft flesh that is now edible kohlrabi. I'm gonna add some of the kohlrabi to each of these cabbages. And I'm gonna save just a little bit because I also have some red cabbage that we chopped up and we're keeping that separate. And then I'm just gonna mix that in. You can tell the cabbage has already shrunk down quite a bit. Next, I'm gonna be peeling and chopping the beets and shredding our carrots. cleaned up a little bit and we're going to be moving right on to the greens. For a lot of these I'm going to be just pulling them along the stem because I don't want to use most of the stem. This is one of our favorite kales. It's Toscana and this one has a purple rib. A lot of the times if we're cooking these I use the ribs. I eat them but because we're canning it I'm going to take these guys out. Right, I'm finally ready to get our cabbage behind me rinsed and strained. Put this all aside for now and then we're going to be combining the mixtures. I've got the first batch rinsed and this is our second one we're working on. 
I filled up the five gallon buckets with water so the cabbage was sitting there for a moment and then we strained it and now I'm rinsing it again just to get rid of that salt. So I've combined both cabbage and kohlrabi mixtures into one bucket and now I'm going to be adding most of the carrots. I'm going to save some for the purple mixture and then I'm going to be adding most of the greens to this too. I'm overflowing right now. I'm going to have to transfer this back to a bucket to get it mixed up. Okay, these mixtures look great. Um, we're making a lot more this time around than last time, which is great. We ran out of it pretty quickly last year, so I'm very excited that we have this much. Just to give you an idea for reference, I used about six green cabbages to make these mixtures, and you can see they're both about half full. So it's a pretty good amount. We have our jars heating up outside and I am about to start the brine, but before we get to that, I want to mix our red cabbage since I chopped that yesterday and I have yet to put the salt and let it pull out some of that moisture. And this is about two cabbage heads. I'm going to add the kohlrabi that we saved from before and I'm going to add about two to three tablespoons of kosher salt. We're going to give that a mix and I'm going to let all of this sit while we're getting everything else ready. I'm going to get the pickle brine started and I'm going to be doing a ratio of one to two. So for one cup of water that I put in, I'm going to be following up with two cups of vinegar. For this batch, I'm going to try to do half apple cider vinegar and half white vinegar, but I only have two apple cider vinegars available. So we'll see if I have to add some more white vinegar. We're first gonna start with the water. I have eight cups measured out. And I'm gonna add eight cups of apple cider vinegar and eight cups of distilled white vinegar. And I'm gonna get the heat on you definitely don't have to put sugar in this recipe, but I do like our coleslaw to have a little bit of sweetness. So I'm going to start with four cups in this batch and we'll just see if that's good. And although I love celery seed, we are out of it. So I'm going to be adding some mustard seed today. I'm going to do about a tablespoon. Eric pulled out these hot jars for me. They're ready for us to start with our raw pack. The brine is almost hot and our lids behind them are warming up. Things are getting a little messy now, but that's okay. We want to push the coleslaw down. I don't want to squish it too much, but I, I do want to pack it in there a little bit. And then I want to leave, leave about a half inch headspace. We're going to get these outside and water bath them for 15 minutes. Eric's going to be tending to that while I get some more packed. All right, we almost finished with the green batch of coleslaw. We have three more out in the water bath, and now I'm going to be working on our purple batch. And the only reason I kept them separate is because last year when I did this, the red cabbage dyed everything purple, which is fine, but I just felt like keeping them separate this year. So the beets and the purple cabbage are in their own separate batch. So first I'm adding the purple cabbage and the kohlrabi that we salted, and I rinsed it and drained it. And then I've got some carrots and the kale and collard mixture and all of our beets. We're going to be using the same brine that we made earlier and the processing time is also the same. Eric
Eric and I finished up the last few jars. We're finally done. It has been another long day of canning. Always seems to take more time than we planned for. We ended up with 37 pints, so a great amount. Really excited about that. This is something for us that is like a great snack food if we're on the go or if we're out ice fishing, something like that. So really, really um, happy to have so many. We had one jar break and we had one not seal. So I'm gonna put that one in the fridge, but that happens. And I also did exactly what I didn't wanna do and I made too much brine, but that's okay because we are going to use it for tomorrow's recipe. So we're gonna pick back up then and Eric's gonna be making cowboy candy. Let's get started on our cowboy candy. And if you're not familiar with cowboy candy, it is one of our favorite canned foods. And all it pretty much is, is candied jalapenos. We like to use jalapenos and serranos because that's what we grow. And we basically just put them in a really thick syrup made of sugar and vinegar. So we're gonna go through and we're pretty much gonna pick every single one of our spicy peppers. We're gonna use those for the cowboy candy. We've already been through and picked all of our banana peppers and we pickled those, so those are all done. So we're just gonna jump in and we're gonna see how many we have. Um, the pepper plants did really good this year. Probably didn't get as big of peppers last year, but I think we have just as many. So we should do pretty good on this batch of cowboy candy. So we're moving on to the serranos. They did a little better than the jalapenos. That one serrano I just picked, there was 50 peppers, actually 51 on just one single plant. This one looks like there's probably about 20, but we got a lot of peppers on these ones. They're not the hugest, but it's all right. They're all gonna look the same when they're chopped up. We're almost done picking all the serranos. We're also gonna put in our chili peppers, which are these ones. I just tried one of these. These are extremely hot, so these are gonna go in there. And then we also have some Hungarian wax peppers. And some of those that are really ripe, they're extremely hot too. So I'm gonna pick some of those and we're gonna put them in there too. Let's get started on making the brine or the liquid for the cowboy candy. In this pot is the leftover pickle brine that Ariel used for making the canned coleslaw. So that's what I'm gonna be starting with. And basically what that is, is two parts of vinegar, one part water. I believe she used apple cider vinegar and regular white vinegar, but we are gonna add a few things to that. First thing I'm gonna add is a bunch of garlic. We're gonna be adding salt. Um, just go by your judgment, however salty you'd like it. We're just gonna do about two tablespoons. We're gonna do about a tablespoon of black peppercorns. And we're gonna add some turmeric powder and we're gonna do about a tablespoon of this. Now we're gonna be adding our sugar. And this is eight cups of sugar and that may seem like a lot of sugar. That's because it is. This stuff you want almost to be like a syrup, a consistency, not really liquid. So we have about 13 or 14 cups of liquid here. And we're gonna add our eight cups of sugar. Last thing we need to add is our sliced jalapenos. So we're gonna start cutting those up. All right, next up, we are gonna get this to a simmer and then we're gonna simmer it for 10 minutes and it's gonna be ready to put into our jars. And over here, I have some half pints uh, in some water that we're just gonna boil to clean them. And that's where we're gonna be putting the cowboy candy in. The cowboy candy is about to come to a simmer and I tasted the brine and it wasn't sweet enough. So I added about two more cups of sugar. So I think we're at about 10 cups of sugar total now. Tastes good. We're gonna get this to a simmer and let it go for 10 minutes. All right guys, our jalapenos are all done. They simmered for 10 minutes. We're gonna get these in jars and in the canner.
getting the rings on these and these are gonna go in the water bath for 10 minutes. And what we're also doing is we have leftover cowboy candy liquid. We have these two and then we probably got, I don't know, at least probably another 10 half pints in there. And we're also going to be canning that because that makes a great jerky marinade. We've got some more jars boiled up and cleaned and ready for the cowboy candy marinade. And just like with the jalapenos, we're gonna be doing a quarter inch headspace with these. Okay guys, we are all finished up canning for today. We ended up with 12 half pints of the candied jalapenos or cowboy candy, and then we ended up with 16 half pints of the liquid. But that's gonna do it for this episode. I'm gonna get these jars put away and we'll see you next time.